Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, let's take a look at part two of our basic color correction lesson. And let me just tell you, I got a couple disasters for us to look at. You know, something that you're going to run into in the field. Now, I say in the field, and when I say in the field, I mean, you know, in the comfort of our own edit suite. But these problems originated in the field, and you know what? We're left holding the ball at the end of the day to fix these things. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to fix inside of not only Media Composer, but obviously inside of a more powerful color correction tool like Symphony. But the best part is, is that everything I'm going to show you can be done inside of both applications. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Symphony, and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously a Command Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. And obviously the first thing that we're going to need is some footage to work with, or as I like to call them, color correction disasters. Let's go to the desktop. Let's take our u two not usable clips. I'm just going to import them here. they will just take a second import. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at sort of two scenarios, and I'm going to talk about, you know, how you're going to want to have your director of photography do things. Now, I know that sounds kind of odd, but you know what? As an editor, you're really, like I said in the intro, you're the guy holding the ball or the, you know, the girl holding the ball at the end of the day. And you want to make sure that whatever you can possibly do to not only, you know, make your own life easier, but, you know, possibly to help make the lives of the people in the field easier, you're going to want to make sure you take advantage of these. Now, the first shot I have is something that looks like this. Now, this is a shot from Digital Juices Video Tracks HD, and you can see the colors are completely out of whack. Now, how would I get in and color correct this? Because this is not just a simple issue of getting in and adjusting the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, or the setup gamma and gain. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this clip. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark the entire clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to edit this into a new timeline. Now, what we're going to do so we're going to head right back to the effect, the color correction effect, like we were in before. What I'm going to do is hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. We're simply going to take color correction, and we're going to drag it and drop it onto the shot. But I want to show you something else that's actually kind of cool. You don't even need to actually go that far. What you can do is if you have a shortcut mapped for color correction mode, you can actually hit it right here or simply navigate up to Windows, come down to Workspaces, and of course we have color correction right here. Now the cool thing about the color correction effect is as soon as you grab one of the channels and drag it, it immediately applies the effect for you. Very, very cool. Now, what I'm going to do is just undo what I just did because appropriately enough, we're actually in the hue offsets category of the Symphony Color Corrector. Now, the Media Composer Color Corrector tool is pretty much the same. Like I said, it's, it's a lot stripped down from what you see here, but essentially these tools that I'm showing you in these two lessons are exactly the same, Symphony or Media Composer. And you're going to see that I have four color wheels. Now, this is where people immediately get confused and they get kind of scared and they, you know, I don't, you know, this is a little bit too much. Let's give this to somebody else to do. But trust me, stick with it. It's something that's very easy to figure out. Here's how you need to think of these four color wheels. And we're actually going to eliminate the master color wheel for right now. We're not even going to look at that one because what we're going to do really isn't going to involve that at all. What these basically represent is the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So basically think of it like this. This wheel represents black. Right now, where the wheel is sort of centered, where our crosshairs are centered, is what is supposed to be black. If this was corrected, we'll say quote unquote normally, and everything looked the way that it should. This color wheel would represent the midtones or gray. So again, if everything was color corrected perfectly, gray would be exactly where the crosshair is right here and exactly the same with white. That's our highlights right here. But obviously we don't live in you know an ideal situation right now because our shot looks awful. So what we need to do is we need to get in and we need to tell Symphony or Media Composer what is actually black, gray, and white in these shots. And that's where these color wheels come in handy because basically remember, once we start getting in and adjusting the shadows, that's going to impact everything sort of in the lower quadrant of our waveform monitor or really everything that sort of falls in here in our bike in the darkest parts. We'll just come along here inside the tires here. Also inside any of the black part, even the helmet of our moto driver here. Now, Anything that we adjust inside of the midtones is going to be sort of the road. We sort of got the dirt over here. Those all fall into the midtones. And obviously the highlights are the wall, the whites on the bikers, 
Now, it's easier for me to actually show this to you than it is for me to explain it. So let's talk about, well, why don't we just talk about highlights first since I happen to be here. So I said the highlights, this wheel here, is going to impact anything that's sort of white or in that white area. And you see, as soon as I grab it and start adjusting, really the only thing that gets adjusted is those whites. And you can see it in the wall, you can see it in the bikes, you can see it over here on the track. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did. Let's talk about the grays. This, like I said, I'm just going to come down to about here. It's really going to impact the road and sort of the dirt over here, and you'll see there we go. Really, the white on the bike stays the same. I'm just going to undo what I just did. Now let's talk about the shadows here for a second. What I'm going to do, again, just grab the crosshairs, and you'll see this is really only impacting. You'll see the dirt is actually staying exactly the same, and the highlights and the biker's uh, outfit are staying exactly the same really only adjusting or impacting the blacks. So therefore, you would think that I should really be able to just tell Symphony or Media Composer what is black, what is gray, and what is white, and it really should actually solve our color correction dilemma that we have right here. Well, we actually are going to do exactly that, and how we're going to do it is very simple. What I'm going to do is just undo what I just did, just to get things back right to dead center. Because what a lot of people will do is they'll come in and say, okay, well, let's, you know, well, let's try to adjust this. I'm just going to sort of put this about here, and, you know, uh, I guess that kind of looks right. Okay, maybe, uh, why don't we go down to whites here? I'll just start adjusting that, and, uh, okay, that's kind of right. Okay, let's come here, and you can see that this process is already getting to be painstakingly painful. Well, I guess that's you know, probably a good way to put it, when it really doesn't need to be at all. What you need to do is, and in conjunction with what I showed you in the previous tutorial, you're going to want to get in, and before you get in and, and start adjusting your lift gamma and gain, or the setup gamma and gain, you're going to want to come into the hue offsets and tell Symphony or Media Composer what is black, what is gray, and what is white in your shot. Now I'm going to come down to about here, because I think this is a good place to start. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to tell Symphony exactly what black is. And this is what is black right here, even right here on the tire. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the eyedropper, and I'm going to say, this is black. Now, as soon as I do, I want you to watch what happens over here on the color wheel. You'll see, all of a sudden, the color wheel jumps way over there, and you're going to see that the colors have now changed in the midtones. But I want you to ignore that for right now. You'll see everything's kind of gone over here into the purple section, which is OK. Don't panic yet. What I'm going to do come back. Now, you're going to remember that I told you that the ground should be gray. And it is kind of right about here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the eyedropper, and I'm going to click on the road. And as soon as I do, you see everything now jumps back into what should be normal. This shot actually looks almost completely correct, except the white in that wall doesn't quite look right. So let's adjust that. What I'm going to do again is I'm going to grab the eyedropper. We're going to come right up here. I'm going to click on the wall, and you'll see right now the whites have shifted over a bit. And take a look at what we have now. We now have something that looks almost correct. And what I'm going to do now is just jump back over to the controls. Let's just crush our blacks. That's a little bit too much here. I'm just going to undo what I just did. You'll see the blacks still aren't quite where they should be. And what we're going to do is just come down a little bit. We're going to come down to minus 5 here. Just actually come in here and punch in minus 5. That's not too bad. We're going to bring our mid-tones down. We'll bring our highlights up a little bit here, just like such. And take a look at what we have now. Are you ready to see a before and after? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to step out of color correction mode back to source record editing. This is what we had before. Let's actually come down. What we'll do is just this. I'm going to come down five seconds. And what we're going to do is come back here and come down five seconds. And take a look at the difference between one and the other. Take a look at the road. Take a look at the colors of the black. They're almost like a greenish color. The road is almost like a red color, whereas now in our color corrected master, you'll see the ground is actually, the road is actually gray. The suits are actually black where they should be. And the wall back here is white. And even the track is white. And the white in here, inside of our moto guys. So you see, really to do these color corrections is very simple. It really can be done with a few clicks of the mouse. Now that brings me to another important question. Now this was actually very simple because I had black, I had gray, and I had white. But what happens if you have a shot that's going to look something like this? Everything's very brown. There's not really anything that's black. You know, it's kind of black back here, but not really. I guess this is the midtones, but it's not really gray. So you know, we don't even have any white except for what's on the biker. So what do you do? And this is actually you know, going to sort of come back to what I talked about in, in pre-planning. 
Now, obviously, in situations like this, we can find black and white. Now, really, if you have to not do the midtones, you can get around and play around with the midtones, but it's really the black and the white that's important. And we could sort of come in here, and this could be our black, and the helmet could be our white. So we really do have something in here. But what can we do to make our lives easier? Well, this is where I actually tell people something really funny. And I see people have these, you know, that work in television all the time. And you might see them on their desk, or they might be up on their walls, and they're very simple. They're a clapboard. Now, people wonder what a clapboard is. Well, you'll see them, you know, in, you know, behind the scenes making of movies where they'll come in and they'll say, you know, scene 21, take two, marker, and they'll clap the board together. Now, most people think that that is for audio sync. And, you know, obviously a clapboard is an important part of audio sync. But what a lot of people also don't realize is that it's actually a very helpful tool for editors. Why would it be a helpful tool for editors? Well, let me show you why. What I'm going to do, is I'm just going to clear the monitor here. And I happen to have a shot that has just that, a clapboard in it. But more importantly, it has two very important references that we need for color correction. It has black and it has white. So guess what? If you happen to not have a shot that has, or if you happen to have a shot that doesn't have black or white in it, guess what? As long as you told that director of photography or that grip or whoever to take that clapboard with you and slate every shot before they do it, guess what? You will always have a black and white reference. And in a lot of cases, these clapboards also have gray on them as well. So this is a perfect reference for us to get in and color correct this horribly awful looking shot. So let's do it. What we're going to do is again, I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and I'm going to hit B to drop this into the sequences bin. Again, exactly the same thing that we did before. I'm going to come back up here to the color correction section, and we're going to come to our hue offsets. First thing we're going to start with always, and it's what I always start with, is the shadows. All I'm going to do is I'm going to select the eyedropper and I'm going to pick black, just like such. You'll see almost an immediate change. Everything almost kind of goes back to the way that it should be. But we need to get in and set our white reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way down to the end here. Not all the way down to the end. That's our master one, which obviously impacts everything in the shot. We didn't talk about that before, didn't talk about that before but I thought I should mention it. I'm just going to undo what I just did because right now we don't want to adjust or impact everything in the shot. We just want to impact shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's get our highlights here. We know that the white is going to be our highlight. So what I'm going to do, again, just grab the eyedropper. I'm going to select white just like that. You'll see not a huge change, but in this shot we got a bit of an advantage because this white wall and kind of looks like a white wall isn't lit very well and it looks very gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the midtones and I'm going to click on the background just like that and guess what we have now? We now have an almost perfectly color corrected shot that all I need to do is just come back to our controls for a second here. I'm just going to lower the setup here by five units here. Let's just bring the shadows down a little bit here. That's a little bit too much. We'll just bring our highlights up a little bit just like that. And guess what I now have? I now have an almost perfectly color corrected shot ready to work with you see a huge difference between the before and after. Let's just jump down five seconds. Again, we'll do the same thing, five seconds. Just so you can see the difference, take a look at that. It's almost like a night and day difference. And in a lot of cases, people end up sitting around messing around with these shots for hours when you really don't have to. If you don't need to get in and make any color adjustments to your shots, what you're going to want to do, and I'm just going to step back into color correction mode for a second, is you're only going to want to work in the controls section of the color correction tool and really only worry about your gain, your gamma, and your setup. If you need to get in and make color adjustments, you're going to want to use the technique that I just showed you inside of hue offsets. Always start with your shadows, work up to the midtones, and if you don't happen to have any midtones, just jump right over to the highlights. And I guarantee you, if you stick with the technique that I just showed you, you're going to be able to fix 90% of your color correction issues really in a matter of minutes instead of hours. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.